So the basic plot is this. Dr. Heiger invites Mr. Medborn, a former prosperous merchant, Colonel Killigrew, who had wasted his best years, Sir Gascon, a ruined politician, and Widow Witcherly, who lives in seclusion because of scandalous stories that ruined her town reputation, all into his study. He then goes and gets a dead rose out of his affirmed to be magic book, as he explains that the dead rose can be brought back to life. He places it into a vase of water. The rose goes from dead to not so dead to alive and well. Dr. Heidegger tells the very surprised group that the water was a gift from his friend who got it from the Fountain of Youth. Colonel Killigrew asks what would happen if a human drank it. Dr. Heidegger proceeds to fill four champagne glasses with the water. The group drinks, and Dr. Heidegger observes little change at first. But after their second drink, the old group then becomes middle-aged. The group then demands more, of which Dr. Heidegger agrees, then the middle-aged group becomes young teenagers. The group is, of course, very happy that they are now young, and all the men want to ask the former old widow Witcherly to dance. A fight breaks out. The water falls off the table. Dr. Heidegger discovers that the rose was already withered, and it turns old right before their eyes. The same fate happens to our group. Dr. Heidegger learns a valuable lesson about time. The group, well, they take off in search of the Fountain of Youth, and they drink from it morning, noon, and night. Nathaniel Hawthorne Nathaniel Hawthorne was born in 1804 to his grief-stricken mother. His father, a sea captain, had not long died during a voyage. Growing up, they were poor and lived off the charity of family members. Hawthorne attended several schools in Salem and he attended the Bondum College in Maine. Here he was a bit of a partier. He did not hang out with intellectuals by his own choice. After graduating, he returned home and set up inside his dismal chamber. In 1837, Hawthorne published his first book, Twice Told Tales. He earned enough success to encourage him to continue writing. In the following years, Hawthorne was engaged to Sophia Peabody. He briefly joined the transcendentalist lifestyle, but the idea did not appeal to him. After they married, he moved them into the old man's house in Concord. Here he published Mosses from an Old Mouse. He did not earn much from his works, and because of this, he was forced to take a job as a surveyor to the Salem Courthouse. He despised the work and lost his job a few years later. Soon after, he published his most famous work, The Scarlet Letter. The novel brought Hawthorne wide acclaim, and his friend, President Franklin Pierce, gave him a job as the U.S. Consul in England. In his last years, he kept to himself. Even when they moved back to the U.S., he remained in solitude. He died on May 18, 1864. describe Nathaniel Hawthorne's writing style as dark romanticism. Take a look at all of his work. The basis for each book is always love, but he tells it in such a way that sometimes you forget that love is what it was all about. Hawthorne always pushes the limits. For the time period, most of his works were considered very shocking. It's a bit sad that all of his hard work is a lot more popular now than it was back then. The Fountain of Youth is often associated with Ponce de Leon. However, Ponce de Leon did not write about it in any of his journals. 
In fact, Gonzo Fernandez de Avito tied it to Ponce de Leon in 1532. That was over 20 years after his expedition and about 10 years after his death. Ponce de Leon did establish the oldest European settlement in Puerto Rico. In 1513, Ponce de Leon sailed from Puerto Rico with the three main ships, the Santa Maria, the Santiago, and the San Cristobal. After stops at Grand Turk Island and San Salvador, they reached St. Augustine, Florida. He named the island Pasque de Florida, or Feast of Flowers, because they spied the land on Palm Sunday. Ponce de Leon was the first European to set foot in Florida. He was well known for his conflict with the Native American. He actually returned to Florida with a force of 200 men and was met by many Native American warriors. He was actually wounded and later died in July of 1521. The Fountain of Youth was actually talked about earlier in history. A Greek man named Herodotus was actually the first to talk about the Fountain of Youth in his early writings. He talks about it containing very magical qualities that made people feel youthful when they drank or bathed in it. There are also many legends that credit Alexander the Great in finding the Fountain of Youth. These were called Alexander Romance. Some tell of him battling armies for the, the Caribbean Islands also talks a lot about the Fountain of Youth, or the Amini as they call it. Natives believe that one of their many islands contains the precious fountain. Today, Biamini is a very luxurious resort and spa on one of the islands of the Caribbean. It gets a ton of visitors each year. The Fountain of Youth National Park, located in St. Augustine, Florida, commemorates Ponce de Leon landing in Florida for the very first time. The park offers many different things to tourists, such as the recreation of many events that occurred in St. Augustine, the Native Americans reenacting what happened when Ponce de Leon first arrived. The Native Americans in this photo showing tourists how they used to cook in the old times. Another tourist favorite is the peacock. It has grown so famous that the park increased its showing times from three to five times a day. There are also very many beautiful monuments located in St. Augustine, including the St. Augustine Fort. I really don't have any criticism for Dr. Heidegger's experiment. It was very easy to follow and I really enjoyed it. I found Scarlet Letter to be very, very hard to follow and there was a lot of rereading. The morals were good and I enjoyed the dark romanticism. Also, I really enjoyed the plot twist.